Will Biden be different from Trump when it comes to Palestine? The U.S. State Department is now communicating with top Palestinian officials, and that's the first time it's happened in years. The Biden administration is also promising to resume aid to the Palestinian Authority, resume humanitarian aid to Palestinians, and also critically reopen the PLO office in Washington that Trump had ordered closed in 2018. Now, in another 180 from Trump, the Biden administration opposes Israeli settlements and the destruction of Palestinian homes. These are acts that are considered illegal under international law. But one thing that they're not going to do is reverse course on having the U.S. Embassy in Jerusalem. Now, Trump had moved the embassy from Tel Aviv to Jerusalem in 2018, and this was seen in the Palestinian world as antagonistic for many who view East Jerusalem as the capital of their state. The new U.S. Secretary of State, Antony Blinken, he has said that the embassy will remain in Jerusalem, but he has also said that they're going to reopen the U.S. consulate in East Jerusalem to allow for diplomatic relations with Palestinian leaders. When he was being confirmed last month, he also said that he was going to continue to recognize Jerusalem as the capital of Israel. This was in response to a question from Senator Ted Cruz. Do you agree? that Jerusalem is the capital of Israel, Mm -hmm. and do you commit that the United States will keep our embassy in Jerusalem? Yes and yes. Thank you. Now, Palestinian leaders are now calling for Biden to recognize East Jerusalem as occupied territory in the capital of Palestine. Blinken supports the creation of a Palestinian state alongside Israel, but he also very clearly said that the prospect for those kinds of negotiations are not favorable right now. The Biden administration still hasn't named a new ambassador to Israel, but it's likely the nominee is going to be significantly different from Trump's appointee David Friedman, who had emphatically supported Israeli settlements. Another factor are these Israeli legislative elections that are going to happen in March. Polls have shown that Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, his right-wing Likud party, is probably going to remain the largest party in Israel, followed by the far-right Yamina party. One thing in Netanyahu's favor is how Trump brokered the normalization of ties between Israel, the UAE, the Sudan, Morocco, and Bahrain. And how these deals came about is Netanyahu agreed that he wasn't going to pursue Israeli annexation in parts of the West Bank for the time being, while the U.S. traded diplomatic favors and fighter jets and arms sales to the Arab nations. In one move that's probably meant to show Palestinian solidarity and maybe gain favor with Biden, Palestinian President Mahmoud Abbas, he has promised to hold presidential and parliamentary elections this year. And that's a big deal because there haven't been elections within the Palestinian Authority in 15 years. Despite all this, Palestinians are still really wary. Biden has been friends with Netanyahu for decades, and he has long pledged his support for Israel. In fact, during um, his campaign for president, he was on a conference call with donors And he said that he was committed to Israel and that he was going to continue security assistance under the Memorandum of Understanding that the U.S. signed with Israel in 2016 that would maintain Israel's qualitative military edge. Some Palestinian leaders just think there's little difference between Biden and Trump. Sheikh Akrim Sabri, he's the imam at Jerusalem's Al-Aqsa Mosque and the former Grand Mufti of Palestine. He basically said in an article that... The only difference between Trump and Biden are tactics. He said that they both have the exact same foreign policy when it comes to Israel and Arabs. Progress occurs in the Middle East when everyone knows there's simply no space between the United States and Israel. There is no space between the United States and Israel when it comes to Israel's security. Perhaps a good example of this wariness is that on January 20th, the day that Biden was inaugurated, the Twitter account for the U.S. Ambassador to Israel, it was changed briefly to the U.S. Ambassador to Israel, the West Bank, and Gaza. And Palestinians that saw this really thought that there was a change in the air, that the U.S. was going to recognize Israeli-occupied Palestinian territories. But then just a few hours later, it was changed back to just the U.S. Ambassador to Israel. And when a reporter asked the embassy what happened, they said, quote, it was an inadvertent edit and not reflective of a policy change. And that might just be a harbinger for what the Biden administration is going to be like, that they can't commit to even just a change on Twitter.